Hello everyone, just want to do a short little video today uh, giving conclusive proof that the book of James does in fact teach faith and works. Um, there's uh, this this ongoing contention um, I see all the time uh, with the book of James. Does it teach faith that works or just faith alone? Um, and the contention usually comes in James chapter 2 um, because that's like the, the famous faith and works thing. And there's this constant people trying to bend it to make it say, oh, it's just faith and, then, and that your works just show your faith. But it's not actually teaching faith and works, which is... Uh, a big old thing there. We'll look at that in a moment. But if you actually read James 2, it clearly teaches a faith and works plan of salvation, um, which is contrary to what Paul wrote, which again, I'll, we'll look at that briefly here in a moment. But I'm actually going to give a verse here, not in James chapter 2, um, that actually conclusively proves irrefutable that the book of James teaches faith and works. So let's just dive right in and look at it. James chapter 4 verse 8 here says, Draw an eye to God and he will draw an eye to you. Okay, well, right off the bat, you can see the works thing right there. Uh, again, why would there be a verse that says, draw nigh to God and he'll draw nigh, draw nigh to you? Because, I mean, again, if you understand anything about salvation, you would know that he dwells within you, you know, Christ dwelling in you as the form of the Holy Ghost, and then you dwell in him. You know, you know, we are, you know, we are of his flesh and of his bones, talks about, um, you know, we're of his body, you know? So, I mean, so how much closer do you got to be? I mean, you know, being nigh is being near, you're close to someone. So, I mean, how much closer do you got to be? And just to show you, too, again, this is a contradiction to what Paul wrote. Uh, Ephesians chapter 2. We'll just start in verse 11 to get some context. Wherefore, remember that ye being in time past Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands, that the time, or I'm sorry, that at that time you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope without Christ. God in the world. In verse 13, here you go. But now in Christ Jesus, ye who are sometimes who are far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. See, there's a, there's not a command to, you know, draw a nigh, you know, and, and, and you, you know, whatever. It says you are made nigh. You're made nigh. Not a command to, okay, go out there and, you know, try to you can get close to God. No, this, you are made. And that's what I'm saying. He does it in you and you, and you dwell in him. How much closer do you got to be? You see what I'm saying right there? Works. Uh, and James, I'm saying, not, not in this. But, you know, of course, I'm sure someone's going to be like, oh, you, someone's going to be like, oh, you, you haven't proved it. You haven't proved it, JT. You haven't proved it. All right, we'll keep reading. Verse continues, cleanse your hands, ye sinners. And, and uh, again, a command to cleanse yourself. That's works. But again, some might say, well, this is talking about the blood of Christ, or this is, to, you know, which, which, which I can understand that argument. You know, you're washed by the blood of Christ. Okay, fair enough. You know, and it also says in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 26, I believe, it talks about how you're washed by the water of the word. Okay, so, okay, that's there. But that's not what it's talking about. And I know this because you look at the semicolon. If I don't highlight, there you go. <laughs> I'm going to get the highlight. The semicolon there connects this next phrase, which conclusively is works. And it, and it reads, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. That's works, right there. To prove it to you, Acts chapter 15, to get context, uh, look at verse 6. And the apostles and others came together for to, con for to consider of this matter. And when there had been much disputing, Peter rose up and said to them, Men and brethren, you know that, that a good while ago God made choice among us, that the Gentiles by my mouth should hear the word of the gospel and believe. And God which knoweth the hearts, bear, bear them witness, giving them the Holy Ghost, even as he did unto us. And here you go. Here's the contradiction. And put, put no difference between us and them, purifying their hearts by faith. It did not say that, oh, we told them to purify their hearts or something. No, God purified your heart. If you're saved, God's the one that purified it. You don't purify it. If you're the one purifying it, that's called works. And you say, well, well this, this is a contradiction then. Well, it, yeah, absolutely, because the book of James is not written to a Christian, okay? The book of James is written to the 12 tribes, Jews, which are scattered abroad greeting. The book of James is for a Jew in the time of Jacob's trouble. That's why you see the faith and works thing here, because this is written to unsaved Jews. They're in the time of Jacob's trouble, and they have to endure until the end to be saved, like it talks about in Hebrews, and uh Matthew 24, they have to endure. There's a faith and works act, 
aspect. I mean, you read Revelation chapter, what's it, uh, 14, verse 12. It, it gives a, it, 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 and it says here, the patience, patience of the saints, here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. That's faith and works. Uh, you, you, you just can't get around that. And so there you go. Ear for the proof that this is faith and works. But now if you actually look at James chapter 2, this is where the big contention comes in. I mean, which is, it, just, it blows me away. I don't know, I don't, under, I don't understand how people can come away saying this is faith alone. I, I, I don't, I don't, I just don't get it. I mean, I just, just read it as it stands. How can you say this is faith, faith alone? What doth it profit, my brethren, though a man say he hath faith not and have not works? Can faith save him? Well, according to Paul's stuff, yes. I mean, Rome, and again, there's so many places I can go to, but here's just one right off the top. Again, we already read Acts 15, but here's this one, Romans 5. Therefore, being justified by faith, I don't see any works here, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have received, we, we, sorry, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand. Wherein we stand, you know, town security. And rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. I mean, it's pretty pretty simple. I mean, again, the the obvious one. Again, Ephesians two a nine. But by grace are you saved through faith. I don't see works, and then not of yourself. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. We are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. I mean, I mean, like I said, there's so many passages we could show, but I'm trying to just reiterate the point. Uh, how can you say James is teaching faith, just saying faith alone? I, I, there's no way. Can faith save him? Well, according to Paul, yes. You know, yes. You're justified by faith. <laughs> uh, it's pretty simple. Yeah, but again, you just you keep on reading. You know, again, 17. Even so, faith, if it hath not works, is dead, being alone. If it hath not works. <laughs> You, know, you continue on, um, and then and see and uh, again here's the thing, and this is important to grasp again further showing that it works. And uh, James gives an example of this: Was not Abraham our father justified by works? What did it say over in Hebrews or Hebrews uh, Romans chapter five? Justified by faith. Well, this thing about Abraham justified by works. Uh, <laughs> it's it's a contradiction, everyone. Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he offered Isaac his son upon the altar? Seest thou how faith wrought, wrought with his works, faith and works, and by works faith was made perfect. And the scripture was fulfilled which saith, Abraham believed God, and it was imputed unto him for righteousness, and he was called the friend of God. Ye see then how that by works a man is justified, and not by faith only. I, I just, I don't understand how anyone on can can say this is saying faith alone <laughs> you know what i mean it's just a joke but just to show you too this thing the same thing that it's being talked about the thing about isaac being you know sacrificed this comes up in hebrews again hebrews written to a hebrew <laughs> you know shocking but hebrews eleven seventeen by faith abraham abraham when he was tried by faith when he was tried offered up isaac and that he received the promise offered up his only begotten son, of whom it was said, that in Isaac shall I see be called, a kind that God was able to raise him up, even from the dead, from whence also he received him in a figure. See, this is the faith aspect of that story. James gave the work aspect of it. So, faith here and the works there. But see, and this is important to get when you go to Romans, because it talks about Abraham, Abraham being justified by faith here, and this is so important to grasp, um, because... Uh, it would seem like this is a contradiction, but you have to read carefully what Paul writes here. And we'll see this. What shall we say then, then, then that Abraham our father, as pertaining to the flesh, hath found? For if Abraham were justified by works, he hath whereof took glory, but not before God. I thought it said in James that he was justified by works. I mean, just show us again. See, that's some, it's a total contradiction. Uh, where, where did it say it? Um, was not Abraham our father justified by works? You see then how that, that by works a man is justified, not by faith only. Romans chapter 4. For, for if Abraham were justified by works, he hath worked the glory, but not before God. We'll say that's a contradiction. The Bible's a lie, right? Well, no. <laughs> I'll explain this here. For what saith the scripture? Abraham believed God, and it was counted 
unto him for righteousness. Now to him that worketh is the reward not reckoned of grace, but of debt. But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. Again, how does this fit into James? It mentions David here, and we'll just for the sake of time, I just want to skip over that. You can read it if you want. But again, this is where this is how you have to rightly divide, and it explains it right here. Cometh this blessedness then upon the circumcision only, or upon the uncircumcision also? For he said that faith was reckoned to Abraham for righteousness. How was it then reckoned? When he was in circumcision or in uncircumcision? Not in circumcision, but in uncircumcision. But he received the sign, the Jews require a sign, according to 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 22, and he received the sign of circumcision, a seal of the righteousness of the faith which he had, yet being uncircumcised, that he might be the father of all, then believe that though they be not circumcised, that righteousness might be imputed unto them also. You know, you can continue on and read down the whole bunch of stuff there, but the point is, this event here, this 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 Taba, the, uh, well, I'll say like this, the examples of faith here being shown happened before his circumcision. Circumcision was not instigated until Genesis 17. So the faith that Abraham had prior to Genesis 17 is the type of faith that a Christian is to have. That's what's going on with chapter 4. These examples are given to show you what your faith should be like, what it ought to be like. Okay? But that's important to get because the event recorded in Hebrews chapter 11 and James 2 happened in Genesis 22. He was circumcised at that point. So that's how you reconcile that. See, and, and that's what I'm saying. You're, you're keeping the Bible right. It just makes it so very clear. So, I mean, like I said, conclusive proof that James t teaches faith and works. Again, James 2, 26, for as the body, but that spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. Yeah, you know, pretty clear. Yeah. So I mean that's, I mean we can keep going and going, but I mean like I said, I mean, I hopefully I think that I made that as simple as I possibly can. I mean again, draw nigh to God, He will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you don't mind it. That's pure, one hundred percent works. If you want to argue that, well then you're just, you you're just not dealing with the scripture. Just as simple as that. Um. I mean, there's just really no arguing that, you know. But so, um, I, I saw that I saw that the other day, and I thought this was pretty interesting. So, I just kind of thought I'd share it with you all. So, thank you all for watching. Have a great day, and God bless you all. And please be careful of this whole non-dispensational um, garbage here on the internet and in person. Um, it, there's no basis for it, as shown by the Holy Scriptures. Uh, just your King's Bible is very clear on the matter, but you have to study. These things out. You don't. It just. It, it doesn't just pop up the page. You have to study this stuff. So, like I said, thank you all for watching. Have a great day, and God bless you all.